Hey y'all, welcome back to Conversations with Carrie. I hope you've been doing well. I'm excited to be before you today. That sounded really churchy, my bad. Um, <laughs> I'm excited to talk to you about um, this blog that I've been writing. And in my process of writing, sometimes I like, you know, Lord give me the idea in my prayer time. And I, I believe, you know, the Holy Spirit is the best inspiration because he's the best creator. Um, and so as I'm, you know, getting stuff together and this is one that's kind of been constantly on my mind. So I was like, you know what? Let's talk about it. I've been reading about the story of Saul and on the road to Damascus and everything that went down. Now, um, it's Acts chapter 9, and I always want to encourage you, you know, no matter who your favorite teacher is and all, your pastor, everybody, it should line up with the Word of God, so you should know the Word of God for yourself. So please go read that. I'm going to give you um, a recap in the Carrie Lee style because this is how I read my Bible and this is how, you know, this is how I relate to this. So I'm like, I right, boom. <laughs> no, but really, Paul is on the road uh, to Damascus because he, Paul wants to kill, and actually, sorry, let me back up a second. He's not Paul yet. He's still Saul. He's got his old name, his old nature. Mm, that's a story right there. You know, that'll preach. But anyway, so Saul is on the road to Damascus. And he is out to persecute Christians left and right because he believes that like, oh my gosh, they are blasphemy. He just had Stephen killed. They stoned him and they laid uh, the people who stoned him laid their cloaks at Saul's feet. So like he is like the Pharisee of Pharisees. Like he is like, oh my gosh, you know, of the tribe of I think Benjamin. Like Saul is like a for real, for real Jew. And he felt like these people who are believing in Jesus, oh, they must die. So he is on the road to Damascus to go kill more of them. And that's when Jesus is like, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And it's like this voice that comes down, this bright light. Saul falls to the ground, squeezing his eyes shut. And he's like, you know, Lord, who are you? And I think it's actually in uh, verse five. He said, Lord, me, oh, who are you, Lord? And he said, meaning he, Jesus responds, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and it will be told to you what you must do. And the men traveling with him, they're like, what, what is happening? Can you imagine that you're on the road to doing whatever you're doing? I'm going to put it in real terms for you. You are on the way to visit your boo's house, and you and I both know you ain't got no business going over this person's house. And they have no business being your boo, but the, here we are. And imagine that while you're sitting in your car... Like listening to some music, listening to some inappropriate sexy music as you know what you're about to go do. Jesus comes on the radio and he's like, and I'm using me, Carrie, Carrie, what are you doing? And you would be like, what, what is happening? Think of somebody's pranking you or something. So that I, I want to put it in context for you. And then, so, you know, people around him are like, oh my gosh, who is this? They just heard the voice, but they didn't see anything. Um, and then Saul is when he gets up from the ground. Though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. And leading him by the hand, they brought him into Damascus. And I just read uh, verse 8. And he, was with th and he was three days without sight and neither ate or drank. So that's where Saul is at at this point. He is blind even when he opens his eyes, he cannot see. And so this has just really been in my spirit because I'm like, okay, Lord. I feel like the Holy Spirit was immediately brought to my mind about how many times I personally have been blinded. But that's not the end of the story. So Ananias, I think I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Jesus also had another person already lined up. The Lord said to him in the vision, Ananias, and he said, here I am, Lord. And even that, like Ananias knew his shepherd's voice. Saul was somewhere like, who are you? And Ananias was like, here I am. I love the difference between those two because that again, that will make the difference in how you live your life. Like, does the Lord, do you know the Lord's voice? When he speaks to you in the vision, the dream, or whatever it is, can you decipher what's what? And can you answer, here I am, Lord? Just in, to me, that's the place of, here I am. Use me as you would have me to be used. And <laughs> the Lord told him, I need you to go to that one dude, Saul. You know the one that's been like trying to kill everybody just like you? I need you to go to him, lay hands on him so that he can receive the Holy Spirit. And and the night is like, I'm sorry, you want me to do what? You want me to go to the very enemy who has been persecuting me and persecuting my friends, just killed our homeboy. You want me to go there and pray for him so that he can receive the Holy Spirit and be used by you? 
talk about difficulty, but I love that Ananias was like, okay, bet. You know, I mean, he didn't say it like that, but of course he was like, okay, I'm going to go. The Lord said to him, go for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the sons of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for my name, for my name's sake. And so Ananias goes to Saul. Now keep in mind also with Ananias, he probably was like, what am I going to tell my friends? What am I going to tell my family? What am I going to tell the other disciples that I'm over here, the very man that's been persecuting us, God has called me to help deliver him. Y'all, I mean, being in ministry is no joke. And I, I just love this demonstration, even though it's not even what I want to talk about. But I just love that Ananias was so willing and he, it was all about obedience for him. And he removed his personal feelings and was like, well, I'm going to do what the Lord called me to do. And the Lord used him because he tells Paul, I mean, excuse me, Saul, I'm going to keep doing that. I'm trying not to. He tells Saul, um, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes, uh, Saul's eyes, something like scales and he regained his sight and he got up and was baptized and he took food and was strengthened. I love this because I, I, as I was reading it, I was like, Lord, I'm so blind sometimes to what you're trying to do. And a lot has been changing in my life. And, and for the better, I'm in a wonderful season that I believe the Lord is. You know, there's some stretching. There's definitely some stretching going on. Um, but what he's doing also is he is taking the scales off of my eyes so that I can, for one, truly rely on him and really see what he wants me to do. What would he have me to do? And I can see it from his perspective. Because I love that, again, Ananias, we don't know anything about his background as far as like what he was dealing with before he had was used by God. But I love the one that God trusted him enough, like, I'm going to have you go to someone that is not like you, is basically believing something totally opposite. And I want you to lay hands on him so that person can truly see me, truly see and have the scales released off of his eyes. You know, when they were, he, I once was blind, but now I see. That's where, where uh, Saul was at. And Ananias was used so mightily in that. So for one, I think about like, gosh, Lord, can I be an Ananias? Can I be used for you? But then also, I remember the times that I feel like Saul. And as I've been navigating different times, you know, whether I, I, I had a new job and it comes with its own challenges. And I'm like, Lord, don't let the scales be on my eyes. Let me see so clearly what you would have me to be. Let me not be blinded by my desires. Let me not be blinded by my own ignorance. Let me not be blinded by my pride. But instead, Lord, let me walk in humility and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that, that mindset, that, that place of surrender, I do believe is that's where the scales can fall from our eyes. So you may be facing a really difficult season right now, or you may just be facing a time of confusion. And it might be that you have scales of disappointment on your eyes because maybe something happened in your life before that you just don't know why the Lord allowed it to happen and that you're struggling with that. And you don't want to view everything else from the scales or the lens of disappointment. Instead, you want to view it from a, a place of redemption. So you might have to pray, Lord, let the scales of disappointment fall from my eyes so that I can see you and I can truly hear you and what you would have me to do. Also, you might be like, Lord, I'm waiting on you to, to you know, show up in this particular area of my life. I'm waiting on the new house. I'm waiting on the new job. I'm waiting on the husband. I'm waiting on the baby. Um, I pray that your eyes, your, not, your lens is not from a place of weariness and it's not from a place of comparison because of what you're seeing on social media. Such and such just got pregnant or such and such just got their six figure job. No, I pray that your eyes are from a, like the scales of, uh, of, of weariness would fall from your eyes and instead that you would have the scales, I mean, excuse me, you would have a fresh eyes so that you would be walking in contentment and that you can actually see like, okay, well that's, that's their story. I can pray over them and pray for them, but I'm going to believe the Lord has something great for me. Because again, we don't even realize sometimes that we have these scales on our eyes. We are just going about our business, but I love that Paul actually could not see and he had had the time of consecration and fasting. So he was like, okay, let me, let me figure out what I'm going to do. I imagine what he was doing on those three days and three nights when he didn't eat or drink and he couldn't see. I pray that he was uh, seeking the Lord. I pray that he was just like in the, in the place of like, Lord, what is this? What's going on? Cause he just had an amazing encounter that probably scared the mess out of him, but it was still an encounter with Jesus. And I wonder if there were times that we we're facing something difficult, if we could go into a place of fasting and surrender 
where we're not looking what social media says, we're not looking at what the you know our friends have to say, but instead of we got into our words so that we can really see and have the scales of the lies the enemy has told us, have the scales of fear, have the scales of doubt and disbelief fall from our eyes so that we can walk in faith and we can walk in strength and we can walk in courage and actually do what the Lord would have us to do. What, a, what would happen if that was our plan? So I pray today that you, the scales from your eyes would fall, that you would be able to look at your current circumstance and even look at what the future the Lord has for you, his will, that you would see it with his eyes, with true eyes that are filtered through the Holy Spirit and not your own hurt or your issues or your lack of faith. I pray, Lord, would just cover you today and that you would, he would give you a divine strategy on what to do so that like Saul, you would be used for him in the great way that would change the trajectory of Christians going going forward. But even if yours is just meant to change the tra trajectory of your family, even if you're just meant to change the trajectory of your uh, your workplace, even if the scales falling from your eyes is meant for you to just change what happens in your workplace and in your home, I'm going to pray that you can see and see through the lens of the Holy Spirit. I hope you are encouraged today. Please feel free to like and subscribe. And if you love to read, head over to carelee.com and check out my blog. Take care.